Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an easy below ground survival base. This entire survival base is dug into the ground. It features a large farm, a nether portal, a house that is a little bit bigger than you might have thought, and also there is a little secret. Whoop. Oh, what's this hidden behind the nether portal? Who would have seen that coming? And that's all there is to it. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you are new around here and click that little bell next to the subscription button as that will ensure that you get all of these videos sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, let's get started. Now, just before we begin building everybody, here are all of the major materials that we are going to be using for the structure of our survival base. I'm not going to include any materials in this list that are decorative materials, as I will leave the decoration up to you. I'll show you how to decorate the build, but they simply just won't be in the list. The amount of space required is a 16 by 16 block area on the ground. Do feel free to build this little grid in your world if you do feel as though it may help you out. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to, gather all of those materials, make sure that you got enough room to make it, make sure you're ready, and once you are, we can begin. Step 1 Wombles, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made it. Count to the right of this corner, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then count inwards, 1. I want you to destroy this block and 3 to the right of it, 1, 2, 3. I then want you to destroy upright diagonally and 1 to the right. Destroy two blocks upright diagonally and one going back. Destroy a block upright diagonally and destroy three going back. One, two, three. Destroy a block up left diagonally and one going up. Destroy two blocks up left diagonally. Destroy one going left. Destroy a block up left diagonally. Destroy three going left. One, two, three. Destroy a block bottom left diagonally, one going left. Two bottom left diagonals, one, two. Destroy one going down. Destroy a block bottom left diagonally, go down by three, one, two, three. Destroy a block bottom right diagonally, go down by one. Destroy two blocks bottom right diagonally, and then destroy one going right. So, depending upon how you're building this, you, that might be a little bit more complicated. But if you do it from the sky, like looking down, that's the sort of shape that we're looking for. That's a very important shape, ladies and gentlemen, and here's why. We now want to dig downwards inside of all of these holes that we have just created, right? Three more times. So we want to go one, two, three. And that is how far we want our base to dip down. Now, do bear in mind that you can make your base further down in the ground. It doesn't really change very much. The only thing that you may be risking by digging the base further down in the ground is the fact that you're more likely to run into cave systems and things of that nature. You will also have to alter the way that you get down into the base if you do decide to go deeper than the recommended in total four that we have decided to do ourselves. You see, it's four, we're digging down three now, but we already started with one, hence why we are digging down by four in total. I think that this is a good compromise between having a pretty decent below ground base. I think that digging down by four is quite a nice intermediate for this easy below ground base. But here's the thing, now that we have dug all of that out, ladies and gentlemen, what we are now going to do is we are going to fill in all of this using some spruce wood. Now, we're just filling all of the outside parts in with spruce wood. The reason that we're doing this is because we want to give our survival base a shape. There's not particularly an easy way to do this, I don't think. I think that really we've just got to fill in all of the holes 
and if you're on survival, which I imagine you might be since this is a survival based tutorial, then you're just going to painstakingly have to hop in the holes and just fill them in that way. I'm not sure if you can actually reach far down enough uh, from the surface to do this, but either way, we want to end up with the same result. And this is going to give us what I would refer to as the boundary for the survival base. So, from the surface, at the very least, we're not really going to be taking up too much more room than this. We are going to add a border around this using some leaves, just because it looks quite nice, I think. But, we're not really going to be expanding on the surface further than this circle that we have created. In addition to this circle, and by the way, you have two choices here. You can use either spruce wood, or I do quite like this. The spruce logs give us the different kind of top. So like if you place spruce logs instead of spruce wood around the top of this, and this is completely personal preference, then it almost gives a finish. It almost makes it look a little bit more survivally if you do this. So that's going to be a personal choice up to you, but I quite like the log finish rather than the wood, but that's complete and utterly your choice. I'm going to add spruce leaves all the way around the outside of this. So the spruce leaves are pretty much going to act as a buffer between the walls and the outside of the walls. So, just in a big circle, it's just going to add a nice little bit of colour. It almost looks as though this base is kind of made inside of the stump of a giant ancient tree that is no longer here, if you can kind of imagine that. Or at least, that's what I like to think. So, now that we have created our circle, I want you to figure out where the front of your base is. You can literally make it on any one of the four sides. The front of the base simply needs the middle two blocks knocked out of it on whatever side you choose. This side's mine, facing towards over that chicken on the cliff over there. What we now have to do is painstakingly dig one, two, three, four rows out of the entire ground. Like, the entire area has to be dug out. And once you have finished that, ladies and gentlemen, you will end up with something that should look. This is what the area will look like once you have dug four rows down. You know that you have went the right amount of space down when, if you destroy any further down, you don't see the spruce wood anymore. So you've just got to be careful, make sure you don't go too far down, or do, it's completely up to you. But once you have completed that part of the tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, what we're now going to do is we are going to add some stairs so that we can actually, like, get into our base, right? So, we have our entrance. We've already knocked out these two middle blocks. And I'm going to remove these two spruces here, and I'm going to place some stairs. And we're just going to have a natural dissension of stairs here, just like this that is going to allow us to get into our base. So just like that, so a set of stairs with some, uh, with some birch wood slabs underneath, easy as that. You might even want to change these two blocks here up between the leaves into birch as well, if you like. I want to have a pathway that leads you directly to the nether portal. So that's going to be the opposite side of these stairs, right? I'm using birchwood slabs, which isn't the most efficient way to actually do this, but uh, I'm considering leaving the birchwood slabs in here, just because I kind of like the aesthetic of them. I'm going to turn the right side of the of the survival base into dirt. I'm, I'm just going to completely dirt the entire place and hopefully we might even be able to get a little bit of grass forming as well as that will help with decoration. So the entire right side of this area, as I mentioned, going to completely dirt the entire place and this is going to be mostly a farm area for the most part, like this. So just that area to the right. I'm going to create a cubby hole in the wall. The cubby holes are basically just about a two by two block area. We destroy two rows backwards. We fill the back of the hole in with 
maybe birch wood slabs or something like that, a contrast material, and then that allows you to place some like chests and some lights and stuff above it. So there's only one on the like outer part of the base and that's right there. I want to destroy behind where the nether portal is going to be, but I feel as though it will be easier to visualize this if we have the portal. So grab yourself your obsidian and let's make a nether portal. The bottom of the nether portal is going to be made into the ground. So I'm going to place a layer of obsidian here that just slots into the ground at the end of this path. I'm going to make it high enough that we can actually enter it. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to place a fourth block and extend across the top. So it's three rows high in the middle. I want to destroy inside of the nether portal like this and I'm going to destroy two rows. And I'm just going to make that cubby hole that I mentioned. So using a mixture of birch planks and maybe we'll even include a little bit of spruce wood in here too. Just just why not? Let's do it. And we can, uh, we can just add a nice little box room in here. So what this is going to do is it will allow us to store something behind the nether portal. You can make that room a lot bigger if you like, but it just gives us like a nice little secret room. So you can put an ender chest, maybe a set of diamond armor if you like, and you can have a light behind it. And people who are observant will be able to see it. So now that we have all of this farmland out to the right, we've got the cubby hole, we've got our little secret nether portal, we should rarely make the house because that is where the vast majority of the living space is going to be. It's quite easy to make and we're going to start the house off here. If you guys can see what I'm talking about, it's going to be right here from this spruce wood. We're going to place spruce wood planks, two of them, one, two, moving forwards. We're then going to extend the spruce wood planks to the left by four. One, two, three, four. We're going to connect back to this wall. Going to add two rows on top. One, two, just all the way around like this. Perfect. I want to make the inside of the floor area birch wood planks. Just because it's a contrast material, you can change it to any other color that you like. Uh, we have to have a door that is going to be on the right side here, which I also want to change underneath it into some birch wood planks. Birch door inside the area. Going to destroy this little gap here. Going to add a little window. I want to add a roof to this thing, but I also want to add like a little chimney. So I guess we'll add the roof first. We start on the top sides of the left and right side of the house and we place rows of birch wood slabs extending forwards and to the sides of the house. We then extend the birch wood slabs inwards and upwards until we eventually reach what will be the middle of the house. So that will actually be here in between the door and the window. You stick an extra spruce wood plank there just so that it doesn't look goofy and we then fill in the roof so the roof simply extends backwards like this there we go and it connects to the wall of the survival base and it's just half a row below the top which is planned believe it or not so that is the house when it comes to the house you can really make it as big as you like so all you gotta do is just destroy into the side of the landscape so you can destroy three blocks worth of space like in terms of height i'd only make it about five or so rows deep like one two three right and then this would be four and then this would be five like this would be about a decent amount of space you're more than welcome to go further though you you can make it as far or as deep as you like it doesn't matter it's up to you and if you want you can clean up the inside of your house so you can destroy the spruce of the walls you can replace all of the dirt you can really make it nice inside here you can add cubby holes i'll show you how to add one of those or two of those or as many of those as you like later but let's just destroy all of the all of this and i'm going to replace the floor using birchwood slabs of course just because i think that that will look rather nice and when it comes to the ceiling and I, I know that we kind of have like this uh it doesn't look particularly nice does it so what we're going to do is we're just going to use some birchwood slabs here and we're just going to there we go 
There we are, perfect. So we've just covered up that ceiling. If you want to make a cubby hole in the wall, easily done. Simply destroy two blocks, give it a back in, and then you can use that for whatever you like. You can do that on the left, you can do that on the right, you can do it at the back if you want. You know, you can kind of like go as far as you like with this whole thing. You could even make them dead center to the wall. Uh, oh, no, you can't make them dead center to the wall. My bad. So, not unless you don't mind having the uh, the uh, the birch wood as a backing. So, uh, you just got to be careful, respect the space and all of that. So, that is the inside of the house. We'll decorate all of that later on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, also, on the house, I, I like the idea of having a little chimney. And the chimney's basically, it's just going to be on the left side of the house here. And it's just going to be a row of spruce wood planks extending upwards. And it's just, just basically going to go one row higher than the roof. That's all there is to it. Now, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, that is the major structure of the base complete. We have our farmland, we've got our nether portal, we have our house. Now, all we have to do is decorate it. So, this is all going to be completely up to you. You can decorate this in a completely different way if you like. This is just how I've done things, and you can take inspiration from it, or you could copy it directly, or you could just do your own thing. Let's do this. We're going to begin with the farmland. We're going to be using a hoe, some seeds, more seeds, water, composter, chest, lanterns, item frames, and wheat. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this little cubby hole up here. I'm going to place a double chest that we can keep supplies in, item frame above it, wheat, so maybe we keep wheat in this chest, or whatever you like, change that if you want. Um, I'm just going to place a lantern so that it provides a little bit of light. I want to hoe most of this area, so a decent portion of this. I'm going to hoe it in two halves. I'm going to hoe the left side here, like this, and I'm going to place regular old seeds, some good old wheat, like this, and I'm going to hoe the right half, and I'm going to place beetroot. This is where things get subjective, ladies and gentlemen. You can place your own seeds, you can place it in a different pattern, you can make the whole thing wheat, you can make the whole thing beetroot, you can do whatever you like. So that's how that is going to grow. I want to add two hydration patches, like one on the right side here and one sort of like on the left side, like this. And I want to add a composter somewhere here too, so maybe like, well, <laughs> I guess it can't be placed there. Uh, a composter just here next to this water hole. If you like, you can add like a little bit of a path, like you can destroy a couple of these parts here and you can just have like a little path. Um, if that reverts back to dirt and then potentially into grass, then we'll be able to do that. Uh, what I'm also going to do is make a little scarecrow, just because it's cute. I'm going to use an oak fence, red terracotta, carved pumpkin, buttons, lever, and a black banner. And to make this little, uh, this little scarecrow, I really like this thing. I'm, I'm going to make it about here, a diagonal of the water hole, and I'm going to place an oak fence, red terracotta, carved pumpkin. Going to give it a button. I'm going to give it levers on the left and right side, and I'm going to give it a little cloak as well. And that's just made out of a black banner. I just happen to think that that's quite cute. And this whole little area is nice and functional. You've got a place to keep your chests and all of that. And as I said, like, this little path here will be quite useful. You don't have to disturb the wheat or anything, and you can still uh, hit up that chest. So that little area is pretty much done. When it comes to the nether portal, I want to hide something really cool behind there such as an ender chest, an armor stand, completely kitted out in diamond armor. I'm going to add a little lantern back there as well to make it easier to see. And of course, we have to light up the portal. So basically, just back here, I'm going to chuck the ender chest. I'm going to stick that lantern just up above it. I'm going to stick the armor stand next to it. And I'm just going to kit out the armor stand in all of the armor. So it's just like a really cool little secret. And once you light the portal, you can see it, but not quite. So that's what makes it a cool secret. If you look closely, you see it. If you don't see it, then you don't see it. Now we have to decorate all of this area around the house. 
is quite easy. To decorate this area, I'm going to need some leaves, campfire, chests, some grass blocks. Now, in the interest of time, I've grabbed myself some grass, but if you're in survival, you're going to have to use dirt and spruce trap doors and some tulips as well, but you can use any flower. So basically, what we're going to do here is we are going to add this nice little leafy section just next to the stairs area, in between the house and the stairs. I want to stick a campfire in the middle, and I want to place a chest. The campfire is going to be quite useful as well, as it'll help you identify your base. If you're just kind of like walking along and you see the campfire going on, then it's going to kind of help you. Plus, it just makes this place feel cozier. I'm going to also place a double chest here next to the nether portal, just to give us a little bit of, you know, a little bit of something else. And maybe even a spruce leaf or two just here to kind of like cover up the chest a bit. I'm going to place some grass in front of the actual doorway here. I'm going to place a grass block underneath this window. And I'm also going to trap door the grass block all the way around the window like this. I'm going to stick a white tulip in it and it just makes the place look cozier. If you like, you can use a spade or a shovel rather to dig out the area here just in front of the house and you can have a little bit of a path. You can do the same thing here by the way. So if you want to create a path, you can grab your dirt. You'll have to wait for it to go grass I do believe. I don't think that you can actually do that to dirt. I don't think we have any around here that we can kind of test it on but um, we need some grass so that we can make some grass path and then that way you don't have to disturb this lovely environment. And that's kind of the entire house area complete as well. So when it comes to decorating the inside of your house, it's kind of subjective, meaning you're going to want to do it the way that you want to do it because it's your survival house. But I've started off with some general materials and we'll see how much room we have and all of that and we'll kind of flow with it. So I've got like bed, lanterns, crafting table furnace, blast furnace, smoker, anvil chest and uh, painting and we'll see where we go from here. So I figure we of course need a bed, that goes without saying. I'm going to place it towards the side here right at the end. I want some light so I'm going to place a lantern right here in the middle of the house. We have a couple of cubby holes. Now the cubby holes I think are quite good opportunities to have some furnaces in one and we can even have like a, a blast furnace and a smoker in the other so that we can kind of like build in our actual uh, like smelting and cooking facilities and all of that. Along this side wall, we need more storage, don't we? And we need a crafting table, very important, an anvil, maybe a couple of chests. The chests would actually go rather well below the smokers and the furnaces and all of that sort of stuff because it had actually, of course, uh, that's where we're going to want to store the things that we smoke and furnace and all of that. We can add a little bit of red carpet Kind of like, if we add a bit of red carpet kind of up the middle, I think it shows us where we can and cannot build. So we want to be able to walk inside here, don't we? We don't want to completely, uh, we don't want to completely fill this area up. Um, we can add a painting if we like. Where would be a good space for a painting? We can really only have like a single painting. So if we place like a furnace here and there we are, oh, that's so bad. No. Yeah, I love that one. That one looks nice. Then we can have a little painting here. And then if you want, we're rapidly running out of space. So we could expand if we wanted to. I'm not going to, but we could. And we can place like say an armor stand here. And this is this area pretty much filled up. It's ready for survival. You could even just finish it off by adding like a little chest there as well. And uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of the whole thing. So this is what your entire survival base will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. We have our flourishing and growing farm to the right. We have our fully completed house area fit with campfire, additional chests. We have a flower. We have the entire house kitted out in a survival theme. And of course, last but not least, we have our nether portal, and more importantly, the little hidden away room behind the nether portal. I don't know why it is, I find this particular part of the build so satisfying. <laughs> And that's it. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new around here and click that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. 
And if you do want to make any more survival bases by me, survival houses, you can check out the card system, description below and the top of the comment section. Not only that, I do make some city builds, some modern houses, some other stuff as well. Check it all out. You guys know what to do. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you very, very much. I love you all and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.